Good morning friends. Today we will learn about the biomedical waste management. Ministry of Environment and Forest formulated certain rules in 1998 uh, for segregating the biomedical waste. There were 10 categories and there were five color coded containers in which uh, these waste can be uh, disposed. But there was uh, many categories were overlapping. So it will lead to the confusion. So new guidelines published in 2016 and certain um, more amendment has been done in 2018 and 19. So one is the waste segregation that is at the point of generation only where the uh, waste has been produced at that point only different bags should be there and depending upon different factors they have been uh, decided that they have to be discarded in different bag. That is the point of generation only. It should not be segregated later on. Then pre-treatment for the lab liquid waste. So lab liquid waste which has been discarded, so which is going and that should be pre-treated. Transport of the waste from generation site to the central storage area of the hospital and transport of waste from the central storage area to the common biomedical waste treatment facility. And it is very important that uh, the treatment or the disposal which has uh, for the biomedical waste should be done within the 48 hour of generation. So first category is the uh, this yellow infectious non-plastic waste. So for that we use yellow bag and different type of waste can be discarded in that human anatomical waste, animal anatomical waste, discarded medicine, soil waste. So what type of uh, how we can dispose this bag. So when it is anatomical waste, it could be human or animal. We can have incineration, plasma paralysis or deep burial. In case of the soil waste, we, all the options are there, incineration, plasma paralysis, deep burial, autoclaving or hydroclaving and shredding. So all these techniques, what are these that I will tell you later on. Then the discarded medicines, for that we can send back to the manufacturer or to the common biomedical waste treatment facility for incineration. Then the yellow infectious non-plastic waste in this the uh, chemical solid waste or chemical liquid waste such as discarded disinfectant, infected body fluids, secretions. So when it is chemical solid waste that yellow colored bag is needed but they should be non-chlorinated because when we are doing incineration we cannot use the chlorinated bags. So we can go for the incineration, plasma paralysis or encapsulation. When we talk of chemical liquid waste, so they have to be discharged into separate collection system and which directly lead to this infected uh, water to the effluent treatment system. We cannot discard it into yellow bag because it's a liquid thing. So we have to uh, discharge into separate collection system which will go to the effluent treatment system. So it should be pre-treated before mixing with the other waste water. Then this yellow category also involves the, all the discarded line and waste which have been contaminated with the blood or the body fluid. That it can include the mask, cap, gown, shoe cover. All these are things are there. So they have to be uh, disinfected followed by the incineration or plasma paralysis. Then the microbiological waste or the lab related waste for that. First they have to be autoclave or uh, pre-treat to sterilize with the chlorinated chemicals on site plus incineration. Then comes the second which involves the red bag. So red bag what always we can dispose that is the infectious plastic waste. So uh, both yellow and red both have the infection but one has having the non-plastic because all these things we can incinerate also. So there we cannot use the chlorinated bags that can produce very toxic fumes. In case of uh, red bag, it is infectious and the plastic waste when we uh, talk of, so that can be disposed in the red bag. Disposable items such as tubing, bottle, intravenous tubes, sets, catheters, urine bag. So all these things uh, we have to discard in the red color, non-chlorinated bags. Now they can be autoclaved on microwave. 
hydroclave plus shredding so um, mutilation sterilized depending upon what type of waste it is then the white bag so waste sharps so this is white is for the sharps like needles syringes with the fixed needles needles from needle tip cutter scalpel blade all these things and type of so this is not the bag mainly it's a container which is a puncture proof container or leak proof how we can treat finally that is the autoclaving or the dry heat sterilization followed by shredding or mutilation or encapsulation all uh, you have that is a sanitary landfill or the designated concrete waste sharp pit these are the symbols which is being used for this biohazard symbol and the cytotoxic hazard symbol so whenever we uh, transport any uh, samples related to uh, body fluids or, or any sample infectious sample so we have to put this biohazard symbol then the treatment and disposal methods as per the mandate of the biomedical waste management rules the final disposal and recycling must be performed at the common biomedical waste treatment facility so if you have this facility available within 75 km then you can use that otherwise you have to create your own disposal facility now we talk of each of the uh, terms which we have used for the final disposal of the different type of waste so one is the incineration so incineration that is means uh burning at a very high temperature that is 800 to 1200 degree centigrade it's a dry oxidation process and it reduces organic and combustible waste into the non organic and incombustible matter uh so uh, human and animal anatomical waste microbiological waste so all these non plastic infection waste they all been discarded in the yellow bag so usually they go for the incineration halogenated plastic that i have already told you that uh, we cannot use the halogenated plastic waste uh, bags because when they are being burned uh, at this temperature they can have produced the very toxic fumes which can be carcinogenic then autoclave uh, uh, that is a method of moist steam sterilization so in which the saturated steam comes in contact with the waste material and sterilize it mainly used for the treatment of the infectious plastic and sharp waste then chemical uh, how we can uh, do the chemical treatment that is the we usually go for the hypochlorite treatment that is 1 to 2% is mixed with the way uh, mixed to the waste which we have want to uh, sterilize it will result in the disinfection usually suitable for the liquid waste such as the discarded blood body fluids then the effluent treatment plant the liquid waste generated in the hospital they have to be subjected to chemical treatment and uh, they are drained into the effluent treatment plant so etp what it do it remove the suspended solid and the organic matter in the waste water and then it disinfect the waste water that is with the hypo and finally drain the water to the municipal drainage so what it is doing it is removing the any uh, organic waste solid matter which is present in the water and disinfect from the infectious microorganism that is with the help of hypochlorite then the microwave so microwave is based on the principle of radio frequency uh, waves so it is used at a frequency of 2450 megahertz and produce the friction of water molecules which generate the heat so they are also being used for the biomedical waste management then comes the hydroclave so hydroclave uh, is also using the moist heat basis um, mechanism only so uh, it is a low temperature low temperature steam sterilizer and it involves the steam treatment so mainly from the waste only first it cuts it into the uh, the waste is very much uh, high in the load so first it cut into small pieces and the water within the waste only that is being used to produce the steam 
so it is fragmenting the waste into very small pieces and also simultaneously uh, while it is using water from this only so it is drawing the waste also so finally the amount of waste will be reduced to very uh, less so that is the hydroclave so you don't need the additional step of shedding shedding means by uh, uh, fragmenting into the small pieces then the shredder that is uh, like in the uh, sharps only uh, process by which waste are desharped or cut into the smaller pieces so syringe material uh, behind the needle that can be sh uh, shredded into the small pieces so uh, main purpose for shredding is that uh, it will prevent the reuse of the this type of biomedical waste and also reduce the waste volume then the burial so it is a pit which is dug about 2 meters deep it's need to be half filled with the waste so once it has been dug so you have to fill with the waste half you fill with waste and then covered with the lime within the 50 cm of the surface before filling the rest of the pit with the soil the first there will be waste then lime then again the uh, your uh, soil the ground water level should be minimum of 6 meters below the lower level of the deep burial pit. So inertization in uh, this what we do we mix the waste with the cement before disposal. Mainly it is being used for the ash that is for the incinerative your ash is produced and uh, for pharmaceutical and that is the ashes. Then encapsulation it involves filling the container with the waste then we add the immobilizing immobilizing material and sealing the container so cubic boxes which are uh, three quarter they have to fill with the sharps or chemicals uh, then they have to fill with the plastic foam and cement mortar or the clay material that is the encapsulation then the plasma pyrolysis so in this the ionized gas is being used in the plasma state uh, to convert the electrical energy to the temperature of several thousand degrees uh, through the plasma arc. So this system provides the high temperature which is combined with the high UV radiation. Then finally the biomedical waste monitoring. So monitoring is an essential component for managing any biomedical waste in the hospital and uh, how we can monitor that is the, to oversee the implement whether the uh, biomedical waste practices are being followed properly or not and to uh, educate the healthcare worker also uh, like we have to train them what are the different coded bags are there which waste has to be discarded in which bag proper uh, banner should be there so that they can be trained and there should be regular training and should be in the language so that will be convenient to these healthcare workers also to monitor the biomedical waste management in the hospital so monitoring is carried out through either by the audit by direct observation or by cctv cameras on-site inspection at the common storage area then conducting the surveys like uh, being giving the questionnaire whether they are having the knowledge regarding which type of biomedical waste to be disposed in which bag barcoding based tracking so that can be started from segregation to the disposal so that is all hope uh, you must have learned what are the different categories how we can dispose that and if you have any doubt you can ask me in the comment section thank you